the number one destroyer of fish keeping enjoyment, especially right up front, is when the hobbyist sets up a fish tank and then can't keep the fish alive. So the question ultimately is, after the first week or two, why am I doing this? This isn't fun. I buy fish and I put them in the tank and they die. And a lot of folks at the beginning don't understand that there are beneficial bacteria that provide a natural process of breaking down fish waste. And in the absence of those bacteria, no success can be had in the tank. And so family after family who've set up a fish tank for their kid or themselves or their living room end up leaving the hobby in disappointment. Is there a way to hasten that cycle? And the answer is yes. I like to call it bio seeding, and it is the installation of beneficial bacteria, and that's what we're gonna talk about in this video. It's easy, and once you see it done, it's not a problem, but um, I think it's important to know how to do it. So not all bacteria are harmful. Some bacteria are actually beneficial, and I suppose you already knew that. But in an aquatic environment, like a fish tank, the beneficial bacteria have a very important function in breaking down fish waste, which can be solid or liquid in format. And these beneficial bacteria are essential in all environments. And they're starting to home in on the kinds of bacteria that are involved. And they're realizing that these bacteria are not all one type. And these bacteria don't use one nutrient. In fact, some of these bacteria actually use several of the nutrients from the environment. Um, and the behavior of these bacteria, once speculated to be stuck to things, uh, they call them sessile bacteria, bacteria that are stuck to uh, filter media. Um, that was an assumption that was made for decades. And now they're starting to wonder whether that's absolutely true. The reason being is you can actually transplant those bacteria in the water from one system to another, which is great because in the olden days, we used to wait six weeks for beneficial bacteria to grow up in the new system and begin to break down fish waste on an effective basis. It is a couple of stages as these bacteria come through, and we were always looking for ways to shorten that. For a while, people sold beneficial bacteria in bottles. It was a good idea, and in some very rare instances, it was successfully done, uh, except that in those circumstances, the uh, vendor used to have to send the bacteria over under refrigeration because they're living bacteria. Um, more recently, um, it's been determined that you can actually transplant beneficial bacteria uh, from one filter to another a donor and recipient situation. The first time I ever heard of that was probably 15 years ago. The owner of a pet store uh, next to my office told me that uh, told me about bio seeding, and he said that you can just take uh, sponge material from a um, established system and squeeze that into a recipient system that's brand new, and within a day or two have a fully functional cycle. Now, at that point, I had been formally educated that these heterotrophic and autotrophic bacteria were stuck to things. They couldn't be dislodged. There was no way to transmit them in the water or through squeezins. And actually, a little bit passive aggressively, I wanted to show the old man that he was wrong. So I set up two or three systems and performed uh, his recommended method of bioseeding, and it worked perfectly. Since then, um, we've come to an understanding that there's other things, I say we, the, the hobby has come to the realization that there are other things in a balanced ecosystem than just bacteria that use ammonia or nitrite or even nitrate. There are bacteria and other organisms that produce agglutinins. Agglutinins are sticky compounds. They're um, like a mucopolysaccharide, a sticky compound that's released into the water and things like micropollution and microparticulate debris, hazing, clouding, sticks to these things and it settles it out. Um, plants do that as well. They have uh, agglutinins. So you might say, well, okay, so where are we going with this? Um, 
it's possible to borrow from a donor system. It's possible to borrow all of that magic, all of that mojo. So let me get on with it and talk to you about that. Here's how you do it. If you have a brand new system set up, it's important that you have the filtration system in place and operational. It's also important that you have the water dechlorinated. And the reason for that is if you don't dechlorinate the recipient system, when you put the donor bacteria into the system, obviously the chlorine is just gonna kill those donor bacteria. Well, the fact of the matter is, I mean, and this is a sidebar, there isn't enough chlorine in the world to break down all of the beneficial bacteria that you would put in on a transplant because of the amount of transplant material that you use. And you'll see what I'm talking about when I show you some video and pictures later. So what you do is you have your recipient system up, operational, functioning, and the filter running, dechlorinated. And then whenever you're ready, you can go ahead and put in do uh, donor, um, what I call squeezins. Basically what's involved in that is going to an established filtration system or an established fish tank and siphoning the mulm and organic material out of the gravel or taking filter media out of the filtration system and wringing it in a bucket. And what you're looking for is a dark brownish green, um, opaque, very dense soup of organic material from the donor system. That material is going to be very rich in uh, beneficial bacteria and agglutinins and bacteriophage viruses and basically all the mojo from the properly cycled and balanced ecosystem. So you take those squeezins uh, to the recipient tank and ideally you would do this without fish in the, in the uh, recipient tank. Now I've done it with fish in the recipient tank before. You just have to be a little bit more careful and let me explain how that's done. Let's say that you're seeding a system that has fish in it and you don't want to overwhelm those fish with, say, difficulties with dissolved oxygen and that sort of thing. Um, what you would do is take a five gallon bucket and fill it with the appropriate amount of donor squeezins. And then you would perforate the bottom of the bucket so that it very gradually drips the donation into the recipient system you'll get a fraction of the clouding, but all of the benefit. And you might say, well, why don't you do it that way all the time? And I go, because I don't want to take the time and I don't want to punch a hole in a five gallon bucket. But if you have fish in place, that's probably not a bad idea to do that. So you are smart to apply the um, donor organic material in a slow fashion uh, trickle type of, fa of fashion in systems that contain fish, um, but in a system that is empty of new fish, um, of fish, you can uh, bioseed straight up at a, a relatively all at once rate. Uh, Reapplication is not necessary. It's also not contraindicated either. Um, I think the only thing I would say about the um, the, and these are like little personal things that happened to me when I was slow seeding is um, the solids have a tendency to settle out when you're uh, slow seeding out of a five gallon bucket. So you want to put the hole as close to the bottom as you possibly can so that in as much as possible you get those solids in there. You don't need a ton of solids, but I, I have a feeling if you decant um, as it settles out, and it settles out really fast, but I, I think if you decant the clear fluid off the top of the solids, it's not as effective as if you put all the biologically active material in, So, or you might uh, swirl it from time to time while it's trickling in. That's just a side note. Also, if you make the hole too small, it will trickle painfully slowly, and uh, you'll be at it all day. Um, so all at once or slowly over time are two different ways to apply it. It doesn't matter either way you apply it, you still have to watch out for the pH. Um, in certain water that's very, very hard, you probably aren't going to have a problem, but you've got to understand that when you're bioseeding, you are putting a tremendous load on the pH. Carbonates are exhausted very quickly. If there was ever going to be a pH crash, that, that would be the time is right after bioseeding. 
so it's essential. Uh, I personally wouldn't measure the pH in as much as I would probably just put a high quality neutral regulator in around the time of bioseeding. I don't think I would put it in when I put the, media, the uh, donation material in there. I think I would put it in shortly after or shortly before. But you definitely have to support the pH because it definitely sags, except I suppose in the hardest water. I've not bioseeded in Reno, but uh, where the water's very hard. But in uh, Georgia, the pH always sags or falls after bioseeding. Um, I'm, I am hoping that you're um, being able to see, you know, a considerable number of pictures of various bioseeding processes and some videos and such. Um, I have videos put together of um, cleaning a sponge and the kind of material that you're supposed to use and putting it in and what, how the water's supposed to be cloudy after application and all of that. Um, if properly done, the cycle is basically immediate. And you can test to verify that that's the case by watching your ammonia levels and, and such. Uh, also, you'll notice a lot of water clarity. If, and if you're having a problem in a tank that's newish, even if the ammonia and nitrite are under control, it doesn't hurt to bioseed that if you're looking for more clarity. Because again, there are organisms and biological processes and specific proteins in the biologically active media from a balanced ecosystem that agglutinate um, microfine particles. And so it can be used just for water clarity. Um, so you need a functional filtration system on the recipient system. You need to watch out for the pH after you've done that. You need to do it slowly in occupied systems. You don't have to do it slowly in unoccupied systems. It works very well and reapplication is seldom necessary. You still need to test your water for ammonia and nitrite as, uh, to make sure that your cycle took. And you want to use a sufficient amount of squeezins. And you might say, can I have like a measurement of how much squeezins I'm supposed to put in my recipient system? And the answer is no. And the reason being is, uh, first, I don't know the concentration of the squeezins you're going to get. You might get really thick squeezins. Uh, you might get very dilute squeezins. You're not supposed to be able to see through it. Um, but it kind of has to do with the concentration of the squeezins that you get and also the size of the system that you're putting it into. And um, so that's why I want to put these videos up so you can see how cloudy you're supposed to make the recipient system. And then you might say, well, what if I trickle it in? Then I would say, I just use your head. Notice. Um, the systems that I'm treating with, uh, you know, as far as their cloudiness and the amount of material it looks like I'm putting in and wing it. And like I said, always test your water quality after you've bioseeded to make sure that you've actually transmit, transferred a, a cycle. But so that's bioseeding and uh, just a couple of little caveats and precautions when you do that. I think uh, people are going to get in trouble with bioseeding by crashing the pH out in the recipient system or somebody's going to take a loaded system with live fish in it and bioseed it and kill stuff because the dissolved oxygen level will probably drop and the water clouding may predispose to disease for that couple of hours that the clouding exists. So if it's a loaded system, please go slow. Well, I've taken up enough of your time with this. If you like the video, please like it. It helps YouTube uh, users find it. And if you subscribe, you'll be alerted. Uh, if you subscribe with notifications, that is, you'll be alerted when the next video goes up. I think that for 2018, I'll be loading a lot of videos. Um, so you'll probably be getting a lot of notifications, and I apologize. Hopefully, all the subjects will be interesting and, uh, and of some benefit. Anyway, this is Dr. Johnson signing out. Thank you.